The instrument you can now see on the screen is a medical tool which possesses some of the world's most developed technology. It is a life support system which people in intensive care are linked up to. But this entire room full of high technology pales by comparison to another far more developed system of biotechnology. This superior piece of equipment is the placenta, which surrounds the embryo in the mother's womb and meets all its needs. The placenta is like a kidney dialysis machine, a heart-lung machine, and an artificial liver. It carries out all these functions at the same time. It is a wonderful design which enables mother and baby to live. The cells which make up the placenta recognize the food particles from the millions of molecules in the mother's blood and allows these to reach the baby. Another of the placenta's duties is to protect the embryo. The defensive cells in the mother's body flow towards the womb to attack the growing embryo. But cells on the very outermost layer of the placenta form a kind of filter between the mother's veins and the embryo. They allow the nutrient molecules to pass, but not the immunity cells. If the job of taking care of the growing embryo's needs had been given to a human being and not the placenta, then the embryo would not survive more than a few minutes. Because mankind does not possess the kind of technology, it would need to calculate the embryo's changing needs and then meet them. The only piece of technology sufficiently sophisticated to carry out this function is the placenta. This cord enables the link to be formed between the baby and the mother's body. This cord, which is cut and thrown away after birth, is in fact a true wonder of engineering and carries out vital tasks for nine months. It contains one vein and two arteries. The vein carries food and oxygen to the embryo. Thanks to this, the embryo does not drown, even though it lives in a liquid-filled environment and its lungs are full of water. It does not die, even though its digestive system has not yet been constructed and it cannot eat. Both of these two basic needs are provided for the embryo through its placenta. The arteries remove the carbon dioxide and waste food products from the baby's body. Neither the mother nor the embryo growing in her womb are aware of these systems and processes. As the months pass, the baby in the mother's womb takes shape and grows. It becomes ready to step into the outer world. The time has now come for the final stage, birth. But there is a great deal of danger for the baby waiting in the mother's womb. The baby will be born by passing through the mother's womb and between her pelvic bones posing a great threat to the unborn child. During birth, the baby's head will be squashed in these narrow areas and its skull will come under pressure. But here again, a special precaution has been taken to protect the baby's health. The bones in the skull of the newborn baby are soft. Furthermore, unlike those found in adults, the bones which make up the skull 
are not fused together. Thanks largely to this, the bones are able to slide onto one another during birth. The gaps between the bones stop the skull from being crushed during this process. In this way, the baby is born healthily and its skull and brain come to no harm. In the months that follow, its skull will harden and the baby will lead its life in a healthy way. The stages of development that have been recounted throughout this film have happened to every human being in the world. Everyone was hurled towards the womb as a sperm cell joined with the egg, thanks to the specially created conditions there, and then began life as a single cell. Even before they had the slightest idea of their own existence, God gave their bodies shape and created a normal human being from a single cell. It is the duty of everyone in the world to consider this fact. And your duty is to consider how you came to be and to be grateful to God. Do not forget that our Lord, who created our bodies once, will recreate us after our deaths and will hold us to account for the blessing he has bestowed upon us. This is very easy for him. Those who forget their own creation and deny the afterlife are greatly deceived. God speaks of these people in the Quran. Does not man see that we created him from a drop, yet there he is, an open antagonist? He makes likenesses of us and forgets his own creation, saying, Who will give life to the bones when they are decayed? Say, He who made them in the first place will bring them back to life. He has complete knowledge of every created thing.